Good afternoon, everybody. This is Priyanka. I am going to be your host for today. And today we are going to be talking about civil construction design and telecom courses and careers. We are joined by an expert panel, starting with Ms. Tiani Tran, the Director of International Recruitment in NSW at Aussies Group. Tiani comes with a wealth of experience um, in the international education sector. She has played key roles in international student services and recruitment in the US and Australia. Tiani has decades of experience and understands student aspirations and aligning their interest with the right course choices. Welcome, Tiani. Uh, joining Tiani, we have uh, Marcus Aquilino, Director of Business Development and Marketing at KCBT, followed by Mr. Sanju Pundi, Marketing Manager from Milcom Institute. So this is, the, uh, this is our expert panel for today. And our experts will be uh, waiting to take your questions. Please feel free to keep, post your questions in the chat box. Uh, and we will answer the queries at the end of the session. Also, we have something very exciting today, uh, exciting giveaways for our attendees. And uh, we want um, you, know, you, to, you to ask questions, deep questions, interactive questions, and we encourage a lot of questions and feedback, please. So, and what do we have for you? We have bumper cash prizes. Yes, you hear me right. Uh, and so come out, claim the cash prize for yourself. And uh, the cash prize or the bumper prizes are for people who leave the most descriptive review and interesting questions on the Facebook post. And I'll be shortly posting the link. Uh, so you have to uh, provide your, you know, tag your friends um, and tag the Aussies Education Summit 2022 and Aussies group in the comment section along with the feedback. Uh, also, the most participative audience member from the chat box would be eligible for free giveaways like PT, uh, free PT coaching, as coaching, PR consultations, etc. So, right. So, we encourage you to come forward. Uh, you know, make this uh, summit more interesting and more interactive. Right. Uh, so, without further ado, I invite uh, Ms. Tiani to come forward and you know enlighten us. Thanks, Priyanka, for the uh, warm introductions and welcome everybody to the session. I'm just going to very quickly share my slides. So today we're covering uh, two very exciting topics. We're going to talk about the civil constructions and telecommunication courses. We have two providers with us, so you know they'll go more in depth about the program, but I'm just going to very quickly introduce you to about the programs, sort of job trends in the markets and some um, you know prospects for this program. Let's can let's start. So. So I'll be looking at civil um, construction design courses, telecommunication courses, um, jobs and career statistics. And of course, our providers, KCBT and Markham Institute, as mentioned. So qualifications, um, of course, your an outcome is an associate degree in civil and constructions engineering, design drafting It's a two year full time program. Um, you can also do a diploma of building design, a one year full time program, advanced diploma in civil construction design, which is a two years program. Um, most of these will require you to have a year 12 or equivalent, an IELTS of 5.5. Um, and in most cases, you have to be 18 to be able to do the course. In terms of employment prospects, um, some of the outcomes, of course, is civil engineering drafts person. You could be a civil engineering design drafts person, a road design drafts person, a sewage reticulation drafting officer, structural engineer drafting officer, a site manager, estimator, and of course, a contract administrator. So the advanced diploma of civil um, construction design, a very popular outcome is a civil engineering draftsperson. So what is a civil engineering draftsperson? It's an individual working as a civil works designer who supports professional engineers. They are responsible for the design of complex projects to ensure that the implication implementations of the client site requirements um, and are required to demonstrate self-directed applications of theoretical and technical um, knowledge and initiate solutions to technically challenges or management requirements. So some of the details tasks, um, they would be preparing sketches, plans, designs for civil engineering work, such as drainages, um, water supply, roads, airports, dams, bridges, and other constructions. Um, they also perform and direct field work, uh, interpret work assignment instructions, applying appropriate procedures and selecting equipments, collecting and analyzing data, for example, and carrying out um, computations, 
estimating material cost and ensuring finished works are within specifications, regulations and contract provisions. Um, instructing civil engineering works, organising and supervising maintenance and work repairs, um, conducting field and lab tests of construction materials of soils and collecting data for traffic surveys. And this is per the Australian Bureau of Statistics uh, website. You can find out more of that. We'll share the link with you later. Um, so understanding the job market. So employment statistics here, you can see highlighted here. The percentage change is 59% for technicians and trade workers. And this is um, the sources from NSC, the Internet Vacancy Index is um, seasonally adjusted, of course. So in the next five years, um, technicians and trade workers, 96.3. Um, I'm sorry, that's 96,300 for technicians and trade workers. Career growth and diverse options, um, private architectural firms, medium and large construction companies, plumbing companies, and of course you can own your and run your own business. Now we'll move on to telecommunications network engineering. Uh, the VET course is an advanced diploma in, of telecommunication network engineering. Also, there's an advanced diploma in information technology specialising in telecommunications network engineering. These are generally a two years program. Career outcomes for telecommunications, um, telecommunication network designer, a network manager, a network planner, optical network manager, senior specialist technician specialising in telecommunications, telecommunications technical officer, Senior Technical Officer, Telecommunications Engineer, and Engineer and Telecommunications Engineer. So you can see they're listed in the medium to long term um, skills list. Um, skills Authority by Engineers Australia designs and develops telecommunications systems, device, and products as per the ABS. And the telecommunications network engineer is also listed in the long to medium to long term skills list. Skills authorities, Engineers Australia, plans, designs, monitors complex telecommunication networks and associate broadcasting equipment. So in terms of tasks, reflects um, the roles a technician specialist with high level skills and knowledge in telecommunications and information technology networks using internet protocol IP systems who can design and manage opti optical and wireless network telecommunications architectures for high speed broadband capacity. They plan, they design, build and configure and commission telecommunications device networks and system. Job trends for telecommunication technicians. So for the future demand, electric, electronical and telecommunications trail workers, sub major group and major groups. You can see here for electricians is very strong. It's 100% here for future demand rankings, the percentage of, of review occupations. Um, electronics and telecommunications trades workers, 100% is moderate and electronic um, technology and telecommunications trade workers. 20% is strong, 80% moderate. And overall occupations, there's um, 799 viewed occupations, 33 strong, 60% moderate and 7% soft. The sources from the National Skills Commission's 2021. And the SPL occupations findings for electronic um, technology and telecommunications trade worker occupations. You can see here that for the special classes in cable data telecommunications, telecommunications um, cable joiner, telecommunications line worker, telecommunications technicians. Um, the ranking you see the S is for shortage. You can see at the national labour market rating in all states. There's shortages in New South Wales, Victoria, Queensland, South Australia, West Australia, Tasmania, um, Northern Territory, ACU. So it's all moderate. So the outcome is this once you study these programs, the likelihood of getting a, a job is very, very high and very strong in all states. 
results by state and territory. So you can see um, New South Wales has the highest proportion of electron techni technology and telecommunications trade workers occupations uh, assessed in shortage of 80%, followed by the Northern Territory, 67%. Uh, most of the remaining states and territory had 60% in shortage, except for Queensland with 53% in shortage. Uh, it should be noted that the variation across the states and territories, at least in the part, reflects differences in the stakeholder input received. Again, just a quick reminder that we do have the bumper contest. So, you know, share your session insights with us, share your comment and use the tags below to win some of the amazing prizes we have on offer. Of course, there's a $500, $300 and $250 and also some great giveaway. So you have to be in it to win it. And that concludes my presentation. So thank you for that. And I'd like to invite Marcus to talk about um, civil construction design at KCBT. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you all the group for doing amazing like events. I think it's a great opportunity for international students to understand more about the courses here in Australia. Um, I'm going to just want to open my presentation. I'm going to be sharing my presentation. Let me know if everybody can see it. Yes? Perfect. Yes. Yep, we can. Beautiful. All right, guys. I'm just going to do like a quick introduction about myself. Um, I'm Marcus. I'm the director of flood like marketing and the business development for KCPG College. Uh, I've been in education for over like 16 years. So I've been an international student as well. So I know exactly was like the the feeling to be an international student coming to Australia, you know, like a new challenge, and you try a new career and a new life as well. So it's very challenging for everybody, especially the situation with the coronavirus at the moment. It's everybody quite not sure what's happening, but um, exciting news. I think so. Things are gonna get better, and 2022 is gonna be very nice for everyone. All right, let's talk about now about PCBT a little bit. Um, sorry, guys. It's been, um, in, in, it's been created in 2015, so we offer different courses. We have hospitality, civil construction design, the one course that we're going to be talking more about, social media marketing, project management, business in PT course training as well for international students. Okay, So we are located in Perth in Adelaide. So the good thing is uh, we have two camps, um, Perth and Adelaide in both of the series, the original series. Um, we are very well located in the middle of the city. Uh, in Perth, we are next door to all the group. Uh, this can be very convenient and help each other. Uh, very easy to, to come to the office, see us and see the assistance for the other group. Okay. Uh, that's the course that I mentioned before. We have a hospitality management course, diploma in social media, diploma in project management, business course, diploma in advanced diploma, PT preparation course, and civil construction. Um, today we're going to focus more on civil construction, right? Uh, why KCBT? So KCBT, as I said, like a, is a quite a new co uh, college, five years, six years. So we are um, assessment level two, well uh, well located. Uh, we have like a great facility with the students. All the classrooms have uh, smart boards, so very interactive with the students. Um, and you are very easy to work with and you like you have really good partnerships with like the agents and uh, all support the students. Uh, now more focus about the advanced diploma in civil construction. That's some of the topics that you're going to be talking. Um, Tiani already mentioned a couple of things about the civil construction. I'll go more in deep. Feel free to ask me any questions and I'll be able to interact with you guys. OK, so our course is for two years. OK, well equipped in like in very practical technical skills. The course is going for uh, two years with 12 units. OK, four terms. Uh, the course is assessed by Engineer Australia. Don't require the entry requirements, don't require the bachelor's. So the I've been talking more about that. The class is two days a week plus the training led e-learning. OK. Locations like both uh, uh, these courses uh, is offering Adelaide in Perth. Um, the course that comes, civil engineer design drive person and civil engineer technician. That's the, the reason I mentioned more about these two courses, that's because it's on the occupation list, uh, even for Adelaide and for um, Gabriel. All the reasons about the um, why I choose this course, uh, these are massive, like I'm um, 
not sure if you guys know some research about Australia, but it's like Australia is quite a new country compared to like uh, India, Brazil, or another country that are less than 200 years. And like the amount of like space and the amount of constructions that happen in Australia at the moment is huge. So there is a really high uh, improvement rates happening at the moment. Okay. And uh, I believe it's all like, um, look, put this here, guys. Like, um, there is alternative for a trade course. Not everybody you want to do like a very physical, like a uh, um, um, labor course, like I mean, capturing, like um, hostility. Nobody like it's more like a white color than blue color job. So you'll be able to let me open the link for you guys and you'll keep more in details. Can you see that as all, guys? Can you see that or not? Can you see the the website link that I'm open? Yes, we can, Marcus. Yes, we can. Okay, beautiful. Thank you. So I like this website here. There's like a job lookout. So this website is talking more about all the courses, like all the occupations that you might be interested. So take a look at the the salary. So as you can see, he has a very high demand, like a, a um, occupation where the the average is salary. As soon as you finish a course, you're looking at already about like eighty thousand dollars a year. So it's a great like a. a um, Great salary, like in terms of comparing with another like uh, occupations. Okay, so here that's the occupation that you mentioned. The civil interaction person is civil engineering technician. Okay, so I um, that's the amount of workers, like the size. The full time is about eight nine percent, and the hours, the average hours that you work is a full time of forty two hours. Okay, they are like a good way as well for the females. Uh, that's the sorry. That's the main industries, okay? Constructions, science, detection, service, public administration, safety, manufacturing, and all the industry. Here's the locations I can see: WA and the Southern Australia in high demand zones. That's how much is being uh, growing in the last like a few years. So please visit the website, guys. You'll have more idea what you expect by doing this course, okay? Some pathways. Um, there is a, uh, the pathway to do a you do advanced diploma in civil construction fields. There is no requirement as such a bachelor's. So you finish your job, uh, have the equivalent of 5.5, you'll be able to be enter in this course. That's the skills that should be required, that you're going to acquire after that. So now technical technician, uh, engineer technology, mathematics, English language. That's like the basis that you need to have it. So I advise you guys to have like a, a little bit understand of the computer as well for doing this course. Okay, some of the skills that you're going to be required. Abilities, new vision, oral comprehension, reading, oral expression, read comprehensions, and activities. Okay, let's go back to the presentation, guys. Uh, I'm going to go to our website and go through the units of the course. So the course duration of the course, as I mentioned before, is two years with 24 weeks of like term break. So how does it work, guys? These are 12, 12 units. Let me show you the 12 units. Of the 12 units, you're going to have like a two years to do the 12 units. So it's pretty much like a more unit for each two, um, um, two months. So heaps of time for the students actually doing the assessment to understand proper the units. So there's a lot of time for the students to be very indulging in the in the in the course and understand better and doing like a, a good understanding of the course and to be a good professional by the end of the course. Right? As you can see here, just for your understanding, what's the BSB units is mainly related to business. So it's relative, like quite understanding what you have generic like idea of business, the course is gonna be if you already have a background in business, it's gonna be helping as well to do this course. Right? So the H2 units is more related to the um, draft person units. Okay, that's the ones that can be a more quite new for you guys. If you don't have the background of architect or like engineer, that's going to be units. So the software that you use it is going to be using Photoshop, AutoCAD, and all these resources are going to be provided by us. Okay, so you don't have like it's going to be part of a resource fees. All right. Um, um, in terms of the living method, so it's going to be two days in face to face plus the e learning. Okay, the e uh, e learning. Okay, so it's going to be the our course at the moment is Wednesday and Thursday, and the plus Friday do the online class. Okay, the e learning class. 
All right, guys, let's go back to your presentation. So after uh, after what's happened after you graduate your course, yeah, we already mentioned, after you complete your course, you still be ready to work as an engineer direct person in the industry. In Australia, graduate civil engineer persons earn average about $1,574 per week. It's equivalent to about $80 per year, okay? Uh, the average of work in Australia is like 42 hours per week. Engineers, draft engineers, engineers work for a medium and large size construction company, mining company, or government. Uh, as I mentioned before, guys, if I, I'm just look under my window here, and you can see already three or four buildings like uh, uh, um, in construction. So, always, if like uh, if you have a chance to do more research, you're gonna see how Australia is always investing in construction. It's like the population growing, and then more construction gonna happen. So, this course always gonna be in high demand. Now, the more details about the average, okay? So I said before, that's the graduate salary, 80,000, but the average is about 89,000. That's a really good salary, guys, for somebody that you can get. The average salary, you know, started about 6,000, that's above the average, okay? So for the senior, uh, it's about uh, uh, over like the six digit figures, is uh, $109,000 a year. It's a lot of like a very good salary for here in Australia. I would say a lot of money, but it's very good salary for the Australia, like um, um, media here in Australia. Migration my face, I'm not gonna go much deep in this detail, so like something that you're talking for migration agents. So, but at the moment, like the um, the draft person is on the occupation list, that's literally the graduate visa, the to be class of 45. Um, well, college will provide four projects during the course as well, they can be used as a CDR. Um, similar to the process is on the median, the long term list. The ASK score is 311, and the current position, as I mentioned before, is on the list 485. That's the graduate visa, 491 and the 190. Okay. Please talk with former graduate agents about the um about the course and the um the occupation. They'll be guide you'll be better. Talk for the group and they'll be able to guide you like what's the pathway for your potential permanent residency here in Australia. Uh, that's the online application, so visit your website, you'll be able to go through your agents all, and they'll be able to do all the process for your visa application. Uh, that's more policy and stuff, and I finished my presentation here, and I really thank you for all the group to give the opportunity to talk more about like civil construction, about KCBT. Feel free guys to ask any questions about like uh, our college or specific like uh, about the civil construction. Thank you, Marcus, and thank you, Tiani. That was insightful indeed. And now I invite uh, Mr. Sanju Pundi. Mr. Sanju is uh, the market manager from Milcom Institute. So, Sanju, please join us. Hello, everyone. Uh, can everybody hear me now? Yes, we can. Good. Perfect. Uh, thanks for uh, Aussies to give us an opportunity for Milcom to exhibit what we have. And congratulations to all the participants who are here to taking the step to learn about construction and telecommunication. A very quick introduction about myself. As you know, I was introduced as Sanju Pundi. Um, I'm originally from India, been in Australia for the last seven, 11 years now, and been uh, part of Milcom for more than seven years. So I do the marketing side of things for Milcom Institute. And now I'm going to go and share some information for you. I hope I could do this. Yep, you can. <laughs> In case I need any help, I might ask the technical yep. team. To help. Sorry, Marcus, do you mind um, not stop sharing your screen? Thank you. I think you need to bear with me. Right, okay. guys. We, yeah, uh, so while we wait for Sanju to uh, load his uh, deck, uh, don't forget the, about the bumper prizes. So keep asking questions and, you know, keep uh, the session interactive. I have, I'm continuously sharing the links. Post on Facebook, tag Aussies. And yeah, who knows? You might be the lucky winner. Yep. So the deck is on. All good, Sanju. Over to you. Perfect. All can see it. Yep, you can. So Milcom Institute has been established in uh, 1991, like 30 years. If you see telecommunication uh, colleges as such, there are not too many in Australia. And we are like five or six really uh, uh, colleges which really do telecommunication training. And there are only two or three does the international for international students. We are a nationalized company. So we have campuses all over Australia. Right now for 
international students, we have two campuses. One would be Melbourne and the other is Brisbane. Now, telecommunication, see, it's, it's a very big world. So people who does works in a call center also say he's a telecommunicationist. People who work on the phone, they also a telecommunicationist. <laughs> telecommunication is basically transferring a data from one place to another place. So that could be messages, could be photos, videos, phone calls, anything. That's in simple terms, telecommunication is all about. I don't have to tell you much about the opportunities and career pathways which was uh, touched uh, by Aussie's team. There's a shortage not only in Australia, all over the world, guys. As you know, it's all about telecommunication. Even we are able to do this uh, meeting, uh, it is because of telecommunication. So telecommunication is evolving every day. So there is a lot of shortage of work and there are people needed in the industry. The course we are focusing today would be uh, ICT 60220, Advanced Diploma of Information Technology with Telecommunication Stream. And there are a lot of pathways, a lot of uh, positions as well, which Aussie is again touched on that. So I'm not going to go in detail. It's a two years course. So you have 88 of study weeks, 24 weeks of early days. Entry requirement like any other vocational course, it's a uh, year 12 and you got to be 18 years and above. We do also have Cert 3 and Cert 4 courses in telecommunication as well. Now I'll go in detail on the qualification. What's the difference between a Cert 3 and an advanced diploma a little later in my presentation. Now, if you think about telecommunication, right now you all know, you might have heard about optical fiber. So basically what's happening in the old world, everything in telecommunication was done by copper wire. So which means you couldn't share a lot of data and it wasn't fast. Now telecommunications evolved from copper to optical fiber. So that is why there's a sudden need of shortage of manpower, especially in Australia. If you compare a lot of third world countries, they are already ready with fiber and they're all into 5G. Australia is just stepping into it and they're still working on it and they're slowly getting to 5G. So that is the evolvement which has been happening in the last four to five years. That's why telecommunication is such a hot topic these days and people want to study and get into the workforce. Home automation, car automated, everything is automated these days. For all this, we need telecommunication we need optical fiber and what we teach is all about to do with optical fiber. How do you do networking, whether it's a small area, could be for a building, could be for a suburb or could be for a city. So we teach that in our qualification so that in future when everything is automated, you will be able to help and provide that automation for other facilities. Internet of Things is Anybody can go open and Google. It's basically saying how many devices are getting linked with telecommunication. So if you see what's been happening since 2015, these are all number of devices getting automated and getting telecommunica telecommunication. That's what I should say. So it is growing and growing. By 2025, you will have in billions of devices connected to uh, automation and telecommunication. The reason I'm explaining to you all this is to tell you how it is getting involved and how fast we are as the telecommunication industry is growing. I thought I'll just share some of our students as well. We've been successfully just uh, graduated from our uh, course. Now regarding the two more slides, I might need help from uh, your technical side because I think I'm not able to see that. Will you be able to share that for me? Just, just a moment. I'm sure the participants who are listening uh, can note down some questions in case you have anything you, you're not forgetting about it so that that has been addressed. 
Meanwhile, guys, uh, I'm sure you have lots of questions, so don't forget to uh, post it on the chat box. We'll uh, we have hopefully we have time to kind of discuss it here, right? And you get the answers to your questions, and of course, who knows, might win some prizes too along the way, right? So yep, I mean, please. Okay, we already have a question. Uh, can you talk a little bit about career progression in telecommunications field? So maybe while we are waiting, uh, I don't know. Okay, he's on a call. Sorry, guy. Sorry, Raj, you'll have to just wait for some time. We'll take your question towards the end. So our first question is in, guys. And don't forget to look at the links of the next upcoming sessions. I'm continuously posting information on the chat box. So keep uh, updated and keep yourself updated for the next session. There are a lot of sessions related to uh, this field, the PR pathways uh, by registered migration agents. So ensure that you know if you are interested and this is your calling, attend it. And we will also post the feedback link shortly, not now. Uh, please ensure that you leave the feedback uh, for us. So I've got a quick question for Marcus. Can you just share again the intakes um, available for 2022 for the program for civil sure. construction design? Thank you. If I, that's like the website that help for CBT. If you go to our website, so future students cost the tools price, uh, KCBT price list. So the, that's like our price list for all the courses. And here you have the price list. So how, how you read that? So you have the course. The duration, as I mentioned before, is like a 14 weeks, so two years so with 24 weeks of break. Uh, we have a current promotion price at the moment, so turning into thousand dollars for the entire course. The resource fees, the resource fees include all the materials in the software. What's the mean of the resource fee? You don't need to pay anything extra once you enroll your fillers. That's the intake date for 2022. So we have monthly intake dates. So we hear the starting date and the finish date. All right, you guys. That's for the intake for uh, 2023. Um, the first one in January, again, we have monthly intake. That's the location of the course. That's the timetable. Okay, it's two days a week, Wednesday and Thursday, 8.30 to 5 o'clock p.m. plus the training, lead e-learning. All right, on the bottom here, we have the instrument plan for the students, and that's the entry requirement. As I mentioned before, the um, advanced from civil construction does not require for you to have a like the bachelor's. So you finish at 12 or equivalent, uh, you are both of 18 years old and you need to have the equivalent of your IELTS 5.5 or PT score of 42 or above. Okay, if you guys don't have entry, uh, the English requirements, uh, we do have the placement test as well that can be given for the students and it's not going to be cost for any or all for the students. I guess we are still trying to solve the little tiny whiny technical issue, so please bear with us. Marcus, can they start? Can they start the program online at the moment? If they residing in, you know, if they're overseas, can they start online while they're waiting for the the visas to come? Yeah, that's start a great question, Mark. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Yes, we do have the facilities for that as well, especially with the borders between the states. We can do the online for uh, for overseas, or we can do from other states as well. So if the students are waiting for the borders open to be actually totally open, I mean, the students can come by still registration. But once they get the student visa, they can start the course online. Yes. Perfect. Thank Guys. you, Marcus. I, I think Sanju, Sanju is all ready. It's all so, ready. Yeah. I'm stop, can share my stop screen. Share. Yeah, yeah. Right, we have two questions. Exciting, guys. Please keep posting more questions in the chat box. Can I share now? Yes, please. Can everybody see? Yes. Perfect. OK, let's see. OK, now, guys, I'm going to tell you about a little bit about the qualification. You all can hear me, right? Yes, we can. Perfect. See, this information you can find it in our website. I'm not going to go word by word. I'm just going to touch on most important things which you would like to know. As I said earlier, it is Advanced Diploma of Information Technology with a telecommunication networking stream. Course entry requirement, uh, again, IELTS 5.5, 5, 
you should be 18 and above and you should have done year 12 or equivalent to year 12. See the, the requirement for this qualification, as I said, telecommunication ICT 60220 is all about networking. It's nothing to dig uh, pit and pipe, put a pipe in the underground or going up the pole and connecting the wire. That's not what we are teaching in this qualification. Still, that is still part of uh, telecommunication that comes under Cert 3. But on the advanced diploma, what we teach is networking. So let's say a building. The person comes, the technician comes, he lays a cable, he puts everything, then they need engineers and, and uh, te techni technicians who can do networking for that building, which means, you know, make sure they have their own Wi-Fi connections and all those things. And it can be done for a building or a small town or a big city. So that's what we teach. So for that, the most important requirement is you need to have a good working laptop or a personal computer. Classes, again, it is 20 hours a week. It's two and a half days. So we're very flexible. So we start on a Monday and we finish on a Wednesday afternoon or we start on a Wednesday afternoon and we finish on a Friday. Sometimes we also do our weekend classes. There are batches which is going for weekend as well. Course structure, it has got 16 units, which is six are the core units and 10 units are electives. Now, again, as I said initially, all these details are available on our website. So in case if somebody wants to know more about these units, it's very simple. Australian education system is very simple. As you can see, there are code here. You just have to go on the Google search bar, put the code. It gives you exactly what that unit is all about. Each unit is different. Volume of study is different. Some units could finish in three weeks. Some units could finish in two months. Now, the assessing system is very simple. We don't have any final examinations. We have written questions, small written questions, projects and assessment based. Usually vocational sector, as much as I know, they work in this way only and that's what we do as well. So there are no big final exams. You have few attempts to come through and get feedback and get it done. And there is a support. We have experienced trainers from the industry. As you know, Milcom has been in telecommunication for 30 years. So all our trainers are very well experienced. Course duration we already touched on. Delivery locations at this stage we got in two places. Uh, one would be in Melbourne and the other would be in Brisbane. Now, Due to COVID, most of our training is done uh, online. And only when it is required, we call the students to the campus because it's more to do with the computers, networking, we are able to manage that. So we have our partners, as you, most of you have been in Australia for long, would know NBN. So they are the company who is taking care of and making sure Australia is fully laid with fiber. They are supposed to finish it in 2020. It looks, look, doesn't look like it's going to finish even in 2022. So that's the reason there's a so much of shortage in telecommunication when it comes to manpower. These are other uh, uh, partners whom we work along with in regards to telecommunication. Sanjo, sorry to interrupt. There's a question I think relevant here. Oh, yeah. Are all these units uh, will be taught, uh, taught on campus? That's a question. <laughs> As I said, due to COVID, uh, we have a blended learning. So if people want to do online, they can still do online learning. Or in people who I want to come to campus, they are most welcome to do in campus. For example, last year the border was closed. A lot of students when the visa was Granted, they were all studying from offshore. So it's a blended learning. If somebody can manage, they, they want to stay safe at home, they are most welcome to do that. But there are certain units where practical is involved. For those units, they have to come to the campus. At this stage, it's blended. Okay. Again, there's a reason why there is shortage of manpower. They touched on it in the beginning as well. 
because the government in the last year budget they have they have put aside 4.5 billion dollars it's a lot of money towards nbn upgrade they need the all australia to be uh, optical fiber so 4.5 billion dollars means a lot of projects a lot of works have already come up but shortage of manpower these are the some links which you can go and check on the budgeting and what the government is planning to do on telecommunication so now the world is changing people started looking to qualifications where not everybody in each and everybody would do but mostly generally people do a lot of qualifications which the year what other people do it but telecommunication is something uh, very niche market not many people do it so i think it's time for the change where people should look into telecommunication because there is uh, loads and loads of opportunities not only in australia all over the world so it's time to change so i welcome all of you guys to ask more questions and choose the right qualification and get, get and get qualified in telecommunication with that i finish my presentation and i hand over back to the host thank you sanjo that was insightful indeed now we actually have questions uh, related to stuff which you just said so i'll just uh, direct it to you di directly thank yes. you so ys has a question here um, mr sanju how come optical is adopted in third world but is still not laid down in australia <laughs> okay <laughs> there's a lot of politics I, i don't want to go too much into the politics uh, in australia first of all you know it's a big landmass and uh, 50% of the places only is occupied with uh, humans if you see only on the seashore people a lot of deserts and everything are inside in between and <laughs> it has to have a connection it has to have a wire connection so it has to go through the desert as well as you we speak millions of millions of optical fibers running under the sea so if you send a message from here it goes to china or india or america wherever in a split second it all is goes to a tower very quickly to a tower from here goes inside the sea and goes to the tower there in that country and goes to their house so now australia has to lay so many cables all over the desert under the desert so it's 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 it's, it's very difficult right so i think there's related to the telecom question again, uh, course again so can you talk a little bit about that's from yuraj a little bit about career progression in telecom telecommunications field and i think related to that why is is saying once nbn upgrade say is over in 2023 which i don't think is like too too soon then what would happen to the workforce will that impact okay, the future fine. so okay. ready to the career thing 2023 what i was talking about is nbn is going to lay the cable all over australia right so let's say there is a building coming up near your house so the cable has to be run in the building then the building there should be somebody there to do the networking so it's wherever there is construction we go hand in hand <laughs> so where are construction and telecommunication wherever there is construction construction they need telecommunication they need internet they need all this so it, what i was talking about 23 laying is laying cable all over australia but then it has to be diverted to companies building shopping centers airports railway station and also telecommunication means it's not you don't have to look for a job in only telecommunication industry it you can work in anywhere where internet is used that could be in shopping malls that could be in airports that could be in uh, defense wherever internet is there and you know internet is there everywhere so job is not just some a lot of people think if you do telecommunication you can only work in a telecommunication industry that's not the case wherever there's internet you have jobs there Okay, and could you touch a little bit upon the uh, you know career progression in telecommunications field? I mean, that's a question again. Yeah. Career progression is right now, as I said, once you finish this course, you get you know, you have few occupations where you can get hired, and initially, I, 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 I'm not, they're not going to hire you, and they're going to not going to give you 90k straight away as you are a fresh. So you will put a uh, you know your leg inside, you'll get you'll get that opportunity, and then from there you can grow up to. the level of whatever you it, the occupation is really saying and uh, but as i said there are a lot of other short courses as well so once the because this gives them a 485 as well so once they get into their 485 they should get they should do some short courses and get into the field industry because you just got to step into the industry so then you can grow yourself from there
Is there any question? Yeah, thank, thank you. Thanks a lot, Sanju. I think there's a question probably suited either Marcus or Tiani, both of you can uh, attempt. So there's a question about any course uh, from YS, any course available for master's civil engineering, would master's have same benefits? Which state is best to go? Is it in regards to telecommunication? Or so it's civil engineering. Yeah. Civil engineering. Yeah. Okay. No, yeah. <laughs> Marcus. Yeah, Marcus. Do you want me to read out the question again, Marcus? Or it's... Yes, please. Okay, so any course available for master's civil engineering, would master's have same benefits? Which state is best to go? Well, look, the master's, uh, I think so they have the same outcome, but I don't see the benefits of doing master because master is more like a theoretic course. They're not going to be very hands-on as the advanced diploma in civil construction. Because like we, the difference between the vocational courses in the higher education is the uh, vocational courses is more hands-on, so you're going to be more operational, so you'll be able to get the uh, uh, as a draft person, where master is more towards more teaching, more uh, more high level. Um, in my opinion, I would say the um, will be cheaper, like quicker, in general, easier if comparing the level. So I would you suggest more the vocational level than going to the masters, but is it will be have the same outcome in terms of the occupation. Thank you, thank you, Marcus. Guys, any more question? I just saw one question popping up on internship. Yeah, on, could you yeah I'll just question read it up. Yes, I'll read it up. So during the two years of study, internship, internship opportunities. So are there any internship opportunities during the two years of study? I think that's the question. Yeah, internship is not mandatory for the course outcome. You don't have to do an internship to get the certificate. But we do recommend because we do also training from other people like Telstra and NBN and other providers are always asking for people to work. So we do suggest or recommend in case we feel this, this person is serious and he wants to do something and learn, we always send them. But to complete the qualification, it is not mandatory. That's was similar apply for the civil construction as well. So the, um, the difference between the civil construction and telecommunication for like a three courses, we don't need the work with training. OK, but is, is that both of the courses assessed by engineer in Australia? That's make a massive difference. So instead of like you're going to be working offs, you're going to be studying for the classroom as well. There is no need for you to go to a workshop. So that's a, a massive advantage compared with like a um, more like a hands on courses like capturing the auto mechanic. But these courses are going to be sitting in the classroom. You're going to be doing like white color. So that's like a massive benefit for the students. They don't need to go like walk under the sun or like a very like a, I would say a little bit more dangerous environment. So that will be a massive difference advantage for the students that are looking more for a color type of a job. Yeah. Right, but um, Weiss again is asking, but what if I would like to do the internship during the course? How will the institute help? OK, so oh. in the case for the civil constructions, yes, like A is like a, a civil usual said as well. It's not mandatory for the course, but of course, we're going to be helping. We're going to be making links. We're going to be doing workshops. That's the students going to have like opportunity to be joined some companies to do the internship. We're going to endorse all the students to do the, uh, the internship with like these companies so they can get like a better outcome after the course. Yep. And Sanju, what about Milko? The same thing, same thing. Mm -hmm. As I said, it's not mandatory, but we are happy to uh, recommend them and uh, then they can go and do the job. Not at all. OK, great. So I hope YS your uh, questions answered. Um, any more questions? I think we still have some time, so the panel would be very happy to uh, you know, answer your questions. Uh, feel free to ask. Any more questions? Participants? Right. So I guess uh, I guess no more questions, but uh, wow, that was so wonderful. Um, you know, uh, thank you so much, uh, panel members. Thank you, our external speakers and Tiani. I mean, um, you guys, uh, tremendous job done there. And thank you, the participants, uh, all of you who yeah. have patiently been, you know, uh, attending the session. Um, so thank you. Thank you once again. But don't forget to uh, leave your review for the session. I have just uh, shared the review link. Tell us all about it, how you like it, and give your suggestions. And review link is already shared, like I said. 
your feedback is really really appreciated so that we can keep bringing such informative you know summits to you in the future too uh, uh, so we want you'd like to do that and don't miss out on our next sessions in fact uh, ys you had a question on uh, pathways so i've already posted the link there are lots of questions by our expert migration agents um, sessions on uh, pr pathways so don't forget to uh, join it's already there the links are shared in the uh, you know so join straight away the sessions back to back right so if there are no more questions i would just like to call it a day here uh, thank you marcus thank you sanju and thank you tiani it was really wonderful um, today listening to all of you here. have a great day bye bye thank, thank you very much guys thank, thank you thank you, you. Bye. Bye -bye. thanks marcus thanks sanju bye bye, bye.